Wizards of the Coast's new 1.1 update to the open gaming license has met with vociferous criticism from every single solitary corner of the internet, pretty much. Regardless of one's opinions on the wider issues, like for example the ban on bigotry in the 1.1 license, nobody thinks that the 1.1 is a good idea in the slightest, and everyone agrees that it most assuredly is not an open gaming license anymore. And and now if people are trying to do something about it. Oh, it's a long shot, one hell of a long shot, but I do want to bring attention to this effort right here. Hashtag OpenDND, which is an open letter from a bunch of industry professionals inside of the tabletop RPG market, and also some other people who are affiliated with it directly or indirectly. So the reason why this is interesting is that a simple something like a, a change.org petition, for example, which I do believe one exists, is... Nice, of course, it's, it's Nito Cheeto and everything, but it's unlikely to actually have an effect. Wizard of the Coast is an enormous company with, I think it was 1.3 billion in income in uh, 2021, and that is small potatoes compared to Hasbro, of course, their owning company who earns, I don't know, more money than God, I'd imagine, at this point in time. At the very least, it is an unholy quantity of cash, and WOTC and D&D &D is but one of countless cash cows that they are currently milking to full effect. They are not going to care in the slightest about a change.org petition unless it is also followed with a massive, and I do mean massive, consumer revolt. We talk, we're talking an enormous drop in Wizards of the Coast revenue here before there is going to be any kind of actual effect from a consumer uprising. Because here's the thing. As this petition says, Wizards of the Coast want to dismantle the tabletop industry. And that is only a, a slight exaggeration, frankly, as of course Wizards of the Coast's primary goal is not to dismantle the tabletop gaming industry, it is to dismantle specifically the tabletop role-playing game industry, as it relates to Dungeons & Dragons. In fact, that is their stated specific goal in the 1.1 license update, that they no longer wish to, um, what was their word? aid or help third-party competitors, and whilst I understand the sentiment, that cat is long out of the bag at this point, as a lot of people with actual legal expertise have also commented on the new update, and most of them, in fact, I think literally everyone I've seen, have said that at the very least this is going to be very difficult to enforce and definitely going to be challenged in court, and many say that this is just straight up not legal in the slightest. Whether or not they are correct, well, who knows? I guess we're going to have to wait and see, but... A letter like this, that is signed by the industry itself, has more effect than a change.org petition because these are the people directly involved with it, the people with connections, and the people who might have some clout and influence with the, the higher-ups, both in Wizards of Coast, possibly, in Hasbro, maybe, and perhaps even suppliers. Now, if you really want to hurt Wizards of the Coast, then you go to the suppliers and you say what kind of damage this might do to the industry, and maybe get the, some of them on board. It'll be hard, particularly in the current day and age where, well, material is getting more and more expensive, but it might be worth an effort. Though, one of the big issues is, I looked through the list of people who had signed, and as far as I could see, the biggest name was not there, namely Paizo. Creators of Pathfinder, the single biggest and most effective competitor to Dungeons & Dragons. In fact, at one point, it was even bigger than D&D, I do believe. If Paizo were to join in, they might actually have the resources for a real and genuine legal challenge, although, well, it's dubious. Uh, Paizo has its own legal troubles, including a budding union and a lot of monetary issues, too. They might not have the money to even consider taking on so, oh, somebody like Hasbro. It is going to be rather difficult. But again, the industry at least has the opportunity to pull a lot of support, because at the end of the day, what made D&D so big wasn't just Dungeons and Dragons, it was the industry as a whole, as that was the point of the original open gaming license. It was to democratize it, to spread it, and reach the wider audience not 
by watering down the original content, although they ended up doing that anyways, but by broadening it in a way that a single company simply cannot do, by opening it up to far more people who would have to take their own risks and try and make their own markets that might then in turn feed into Dungeons & Dragons via increased interest in tabletop gaming. Now, the thing is that, of course, that whilst this was absolutely successful, as since its introduction in 2000, the uh, tabletop gaming scene has absolutely increased massively. Then comes greed, of course. And now, Wizards of the Coast are looking at the success and thinking, this is basically all ours, isn't it? <laughs> and so the claws come out. They do mention that uh, several uh, major things like Pathfinder 1st and 2nd edition, uh, 13th Age, Fudge and Traveler, which uses the old 1.0 open gaming license as a fundamental core of their design, will no longer be, uh, be possible to sell. Because, well, they, they could choose to sell them by agreeing to the new license, but that also means that, uh, well, Wizards of the Coast is straight up own those things. I've gone into the specifics about the Open Game License 1.1 in previous videos. It'll be the last, not the, the last, but the last couple of videos on the channel, so you can easily find those if you are interested in hearing my opinions on those. But uh, they do highlight some of the things here. Uh, report their projects and revenues, absolutely, which basically means leaking to your biggest competitor what you're planning to do. <laughs> Not a great idea. Uh, giving Wizards of the Coast the legal rights to reproduce, resell creators' content and sub-licenses as well, mind you. And of course, also imposing a 25% tax on any and all revenue over $750,000. I do like this too. Imposing an impossible tax of 25%. Now... Don't get me wrong, I understand what they're saying here as an additional 25% tax to your largest competitor on what you have created and legally own in accordance with the original open gaming license is of course ridiculous, but uh, simultaneously, hi, I'm from Norway, where we have a base 25% value-added tax on everything, except food, where it's, I think, a mere 11 or 15%. <laughs> But yeah, I, I get the point. They also bring up that uh, virtual tabletops cannot operate under these new rules, which is also correct. And hey, if you want to see something that has spread uh, tabletop gaming to no more people than almost anything else, it's probably virtual tabletops. As the very idea that in the modern age you need a physical, physical meeting place to place these games is frankly retarded, honestly. But if you have a virtual tabletop, of course, and under the new open gaming license rules, open again with heavy quotation marks, you are going to have to report any and all usages of anything and everything in the open gaming license to the Wizards of the Coast. And in a system where people can upload their own models, that is obviously impossible. Plus again, the additional tax, plus again that you give the Wizards of the Coast the legal right to reproduce and resell whatever you're making, and considering that you are going to be hosting this on a virtual tabletop, Wizards of the Coast could easily say that that actually means that we now have access to the virtual tabletop itself as well, as of course you are going to need the code to reproduce the actual model being put into the game. As I mentioned, it is rather ridiculously draconian. Now, if we were to be realistic, though, does this have any chance of succeeding? Uh, no, almost certainly not. Again, Wizards of the Coast know what they are doing when they are doing this. It is, it is literally in the update that they are de facto declaring war on the third-party content creators in the tabletop RPG gaming market. They've already talked about this with Hasbro, undoubtedly, and they've gotten the go-ahead. War has been declared, and simply asking the Wizards of the Coast to not shoot is, is not going to work. You are going to have to do a hell of a lot more than that. You are going to have to try and fight this as a legal case that will be firing back, and you should also be attacking Wizards of the Coast's consumer base as well. You should be shouting from the tabletops how an absolutely 
awful idea this is and how devastating it will be to the overall industry, as it will wipe out practically any and all third party content creators, which will cause an enormous drop in interest and it will be replaced almost certainly with an inferior product. See Warhammer Plus, for example, for more evidence on that, where Warhammer had once the single most vibrant and amazing content created community in fandom. All of those fantastic animations have been taken away by Games Workshop and put away in a dungeon somewhere to produce way less content at a lesser quality at a lesser speed and locked behind a paywall The GW apparently, according to their newest investor report, is probably losing money on. It's not a very good idea. In fact, it's a straight up dreadful idea that will do incredible damage to the entire setting, the the bindus, uh, the industry, the industry at large, etc. And that is the argument that they absolutely need to level against them. So if anything, I hope this is a first step to kind of create a, a third party alliance and then go, okay, we're going to have to band together and we are going to have to well, semi-unionize almost, I guess, or ally against Wizards of the Coast, launch a legal challenge, try to get Paizo on board and try to create as much of a ruckus as possible whilst also attempting to provide an alternative to Dungeons and Dragons that can be pushed as a Hey, do you hate the new open gaming license? Do you hate Wizards of the Coast? Well, here we are, we're gonna create something else for you to play that will be familiar and good and essentially try and steal away their player base, straight up. Because the problem with boycotts is that they don't work so long as people still want to purchase the product, which is why I have never argued for a boycott on Games Workshop as a whole, because I recognize that it as an impossible endeavor. But boycotting something like Warhammer Plus? Oh, absolutely. Or in this case, um, the um, the new 1D&D system, which as I understand it is some kind of new unified rule set along with online component and a subscription service. Excuse me, this is not really my wheelhouse, but that could be an excellent target for a boycott because that sounds like a major effort on behalf of Wizards of the Coast to establish themselves in a new sphere of influence. If you could uh, sweep the legs from underneath that, it would be a very good start. I do hope they succeed though, even though I consider it to be a rather long shot, because open gaming licenses like these it will lead to, well, de facto market monopolies, where all you have is a single greedy, demonstrably assholeish company enforcing their will on everybody else. See the tabletop wargaming market for further reference. So um, best of luck, open, uh, hashtag open DND. And Godspeed, and seriously, consider trying some sort of legal challenge as, again, in accordance to every single legal professional I've seen comment on this so far, you've probably got a halfway decent case. Until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.